What's happening, everybody? It's your boy, Charles Wells, aka C. Wells, coming at you with another edition of Swag Talk, the show where we cover the swag inside and out. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the Alabama State Hornets. We're going to look at their schedule for the 2021 season and, and give my thoughts on how I think things are going to play out. Uh, Alabama State was a team, they went three and three in the spring, uh, three and two in conference. They had a, a couple of good outings. Um, they looked pretty sharp early. Uh, Late in the game against Southern, uh, they had a great third quarter. Uh, almost had a chance to tie the game in the overtime. It's a field goal. Uh, they beat Jackson State in a game that Ezra Gray just went nutty. Um, they played pretty well in that game. They did lay an egg against South Carolina State, uh, a game that they just did not look good offensively. Defensively, they played pretty solid. Uh, Alabama A&M in the Magic City Classic, I think they would have been on a better, better chance to win that game if Ryan Nettles doesn't get injured, but I think Alabama a and still would win that game. Uh, they held Alabama a and up down a little early. The defense rolled out, and they took an L. So this year, this fall, I think they're coming into the season. Um, Some people feel like uh, Coach Ely is on the hot seat. Um, he has really got the team over the hump, and now it's going to be even tougher to get over the hump because the East Division has gotten even stronger. This, I, I think Alabama State has some pieces on that team that I do like. Uh, Ryan Nettles is a young quarterback who, you know, who's going to get better. I think, you know, he had a couple good games during the season. He did have some games that he didn't look so sharp all, you know, consistently. But he's a young guy, you know, last year was his first college. Well, this spring was his first college start, starting experience. So he's going to get better. Um, I think his completion percentage went down as the season went on. So teams kind of made him make some tougher throws. He didn't hit those passes. But I, he does have a great athletic ability. He can run the ball. And he does have a good arm. He can, you know, he can make some things happen. Um, He's losing Michael Jefferson, who was the leading receiver um, for uh, 2019 and uh, 2020, the spring of 2021. Um, But uh, they returned Hicks, Hickson and Booker, two guys who are, are also – good receiver, so there, there are pieces still left. The running backs are definitely the key to this team. Ezra Gray is a name that most people know by now. He's a very fast kid. He's about 5'9", but he's very fast. He's also a kick returner. He can catch the ball out of the backfield, but if he gets in the open space, then he's gone, most likely. Uh, Ja'Cory Merritt, 5'11", uh, I think 190. He's more of the power type of guy, so they offer, you know, a, 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 do, a, a um, dy- dynamic duo type of thing. You know, both guys do different things. You know, they can hit you either way. So they have some pieces on offense that I really do like. The offensive line was young in the in the spring. They started two freshmen at tackles. So those kids are, are, are going to get better as they get more experience. Alabama State on defense is where I probably like them the most. Uh, Christian Clark's uh, a fire plug in the middle of that line. You know, you can't really move him. Uh, Bubba Adams is a guy who can get to the ball, definitely plays very well against the run. He's not the best in pass coverage, but he's a guy who's going to make tackles and he's going to uh, make some plays in the backfield. Uh, Ursa Davis and they try to call Pepper, two defensive backs, both Florida boys, call Pepper as a USF transfer. They they can make plays. Don't sleep on that secondary. Um Alabama State, like I said, they're a very aggressive defense. They can get beat through the air from time to time, but their offense is going to help their defense a lot if they can develop some consistency. Uh, I think even though they were um, they finished with a winning record, I think their offense kind of was hit or miss. Uh, they played, you know, a very solid second half against Valley. They looked pretty good in the first first half against Pine Bluff, even though that game got canceled. And um, they just, you know, they they have some pieces to work with. They're just young um, in certain positions, but I think they can get better. But the schedule does them no real fair. Uh, they open up on September 4th at home against Miles, Labor Day Classic. Miles is not going to be an easy team to beat. They're um, a tougher, they're a pretty tough team for a Division II opponent. But I think Alabama State will win that game and get that season off to a, a good start. They go to Auburn on September 11th. You know, that's a pure money game, SEC opponent. Auburn's looking to make a move in the SEC West. They're going to um, 
they're going to have opportunity at least for their guys to go out and put on a show. When they played Auburn last, Ezra Gray really made a solid showing for himself. I think that's when his name started to come around. So, you know, if they can, you know, make some plays here and now, you know, get take advantage of the opportunity and, and make yourself look good, the outcome is never – in a game like this, the outcome is never really going to be more than one way. But you definitely have a chance to make yourself known um, if you can go out and put on a solid outing. So this is definitely an opportunity for guys to take advantage and make plays and set themselves up for later in the season. September 18th, they have an off week. They come back at home against Bethune-Cookman on September 25th. This game is probably going to be the game that determines who probably finishes fourth in the division. I, I still think Bethune-Cookman can finish higher, but right now out of their process of elimination, they kind of fall on the, the bottom part of the, the scale when you look at the teams in front of them. They're going to be a factor in the race. Um, if Alabama State wants to be a factor in the race, they're going to have to win a game like this more so than any other game. But I'm I'm leaning Bethune-Cookman because I think they're um, a, a very solid team that nobody's really given a lot of respect to. Um, I was told by one of my listeners, I'm sorry, I forgot I forgot who it was. Um, so please uh, 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 forgive me for that. But they, uh, they let me know that Bethune-Cookman has not lost a game to a SWAC opponent since 2006. When they lost to Southern, I was at that game. But the Thorn Cookman has been very successful against the SWAC. So, you know, they're going to do well when they get into conference. I think they'll win this game because I just think that they're going to be a more solid and consistent team than Alabama State. They're not flashy, but they're a team who's always going to be in the mix. Um, Alabama State, I think, still is looking for that consistency. This is going to be a game that they need. They need this game to stay in the race, but I don't think they'll get it. So October 2nd, they had the Tallahassee. So they, they did that Florida two-step out the way. Um, first road swag game in Tallahassee. It's hard to win and brag at times. That's a very tough place to play, especially when the crowd's, you know, really engaged. I think they'll be feeling pretty well coming into this game. Alabama State at this point is probably going to have a losing record coming in, so they're going to definitely need to come out and make plays. Right now, we don't know what Alabama, um, excuse me, what Florida and them is going to be like at quarterback, but they definitely have some guys who can play X Man, Xavier Smith, uh, Marquise Bell in the secondary. So these are, you know, they have Florida and them going to be a tough opponent and they're very tough at home. I think they'll beat Alabama State in this game um, and, and put them in a, a, a tougher position to make a push in the race. October 9th, Alabama State has homecoming against UAPB. They were on the verge. I, I think they would have won that game if that game would have been completed in Pine Bluff. I think Alabama State will win this game. Obviously, um, it's homecoming, so, you know, they're going to be extra fired up. You know, by this point in the season, Pine Bluff, who knows where they're, you know, where they're going to be at. Um, if they are handling in the success that they had or if they're going to be able to um, – uh, they're going to fall back a little bit. But I think Alabama State matches up well with them. I think their defense is strong enough to slow down Pine Bluff on offense. And I think they have enough on offense to take advantage of what Pine Bluff doesn't do great on defense. So the one the one thing I will say to factor into this is Pine Bluff did lead the swag in rushing defense. So it's going to be important for Alabama State's passing game to open some things up so they can run the ball. Uh, maybe a couple big plays uh, through the air can allow Gray and Merritt to operate. But I do think Alabama State will win that game. October 16th, they had the Jackson to take on Jackson State. By this point in the season, I totally feel that Jackson State is going to be playing good football. Now, whether that's because Shadour is putting up big numbers or, or just because the running running game, which I think will be much better this year, um, is doing the job and the defense is, is carrying his team because I think the defense is going to be one of those old school dark side defenses that Jackson State was known for. So it's going to be a tough affair. I think that loss to Alabama State really stung Jackson, no pun intended. Um, I know they weren't really happy with what Alabama State did after the game. So you can probably expect a little bit more of an edge from Jackson State coming into this game. Um, 
and if they get them down, I know they're probably going to try to bury them. So I think Jackson will win this game. Alabama State's going to definitely be in for a fight um, for for the trolling that they put on at the end of that game. They get a week off, and then they head to Birmingham to take on Alabama and them in the Magic City Classic. Again, I say it all the time, this is a matchup that you can throw the records out the window. Um, the favorite does not always win. And, you know, I would not be surprised to see Alabama State win this game. But right now, I'm leaning on Alabama and them to win this game. I just I just really love what they do on offense. And if the pieces that they added on defense can play to the level of, of ability, ability that they have, then that just makes Alabama and them a tougher opponent to have a really good offense and a solid defense. Alabama State just so – they're not consistent enough right now for me to feel comfortable in picking them. So I'm going to go with um, Alabama AM. and m November 6th, they go to Prairie View. This is a game I look at as probably a toss-up. Prairie View, a lot hinges on what their offense does. Um, if if they can find an offense, they've really flip-flopped on how they used to be. Prairie View used to be all offense and no defense. Now they're, you know, solid defense and I don't know offense right now, but um, they did. Purview did lose two huge pieces on their defense: Story Jackson and uh, Reggie Stubblefield. But they do uh, return some guys like Drake Cheatham and Jason Dumas, who's a guy that I love a lot on their defensive line. But Alabama State, I think that defense is a. Is, this is a game I think that defense helps them win. Um, they can make a lot of plays against a Purview offense, who at this point they may be out of the race. Um, you know, I think, you know, by this point, Alabama State most likely is not really in the race, but Prairie View, you know, they have um a tough, a tough slate ahead of them. So they can really be not really feeling it. Um, Coach Dooley, I think some people feel like he may be on a hot seat. So this is one of those hot seat type games, you know, the winner may save his job, or they might both be gone. But um, this is you know, this is a game that I think Alabama State, I think they'll win this game. It's going to be a close game, but I do think they, they have enough to win. November 13th, they go to Itabina, a place where strange things happen all the time. Uh, Valley's going to get somebody this year. I don't feel as strong as some people feel that Valley's going to win four or five games this year, but I do think they can win at least two. Um, if I had to pick one when I, when I do my Valley preview, I would probably pick this one. But right now, I, I just think Alabama State's better. Valley will Valley will challenge. Valley is very tough in their own yard. So Alabama State is going to have to be focused. But I think that they can win this game, and I think they will. Uh, November twentieth, they come home for Texas Southern. Again, Texas Southern is kind of like Valley, a team that I think will win a couple games this year. I don't know if this will be one, but it is a possible one. But I think Alabama State will win this game. And a sidebar, which I, I, I should have mentioned in my Texas Southern re recap, but I, I forgot. If you ever listen to a game on the radio, please, please, please listen to the Texas Southern broadcast. Uh, Chatterbox Larry Hale is a man that dude's the best, uh, the best commentator on radio you will ever find, man. He call it like it is. He keep it real. He He's funny. I, I just love to listen to Texas Southern broadcast. So if you ever get a chance, please listen to Texas Southern radio broadcast and and have a blast with the game. Winning or losing, they will they will bring it, man. I just had to get them their credit on that. Um, and Alabama State closes out their season on November 25th, Thanksgiving, against Tuskegee in the Turkey Day Classic. This is a game, if you don't know, Tuskegee gives Alabama State all kinds of problems. Um, Tuskegee's four, seven and four in the last eleven games against Alabama State. Um, the game is back on Thanksgiving, as it historically has been. I think they had, they had moved it to the beginning of the season for a few years because Tuskegee wanted to move on to the Division Two playoffs. But now the game is back on 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 Thanksgiving, back to the Turkey Day Classic as it should be. This would not be an easy game. Tuskegee always comes with the heat when they play Alabama State. But I think Alabama State will win this game. They really need to start to establish themselves in this in this game because you cannot have a team come to your stadium every year and beat you, especially when they're a lower division team. So 
to Alabama State. I think they'll win this game. It's going to be close. I don't even remember the last time they beat Tuskegee in a solid blowout fashion. So this is going to be a close game. It's going to be a fun game. If you're in the area, uh, in Montgomery, uh, on around Thanksgiving, um, check that game out if you can if you can make it because it's definitely a, a, a great atmosphere and Tuskegee is going to come with it. They're not going to be uh, intimidated. And they're going to try to do what they got to do to beat Alabama State. But I think Alabama State will win this game. Looking at my predictions, I, I'm predicting that Alabama State to finish at 6-5. and five. That swag slate for them is definitely not easy. Um, they That four-game or five-game stretch from Bethune-Cookman to Alabama a m is going to make or break their season. They have to find a way to win three of those games to get themselves a good chance at the division. Um, if they win anything less than that, then the season would not go favorably for them. The later portion of the season is not as tricky. I I, I, I can honestly see them winning their last three swag games. Not, I don't think any of them are going to be easy because I think everybody's going to be better in the swag this year. But I think Alabama State is better than the teams that they face at the end of the season. So I think they'll be able to win those games. But my best case scenario for them would be seven and four. I don't think they'll finish better than that. Um, to finish better than seven and four means they're gonna have to beat at least two of those top three teams in their division. Their cross division draws are are not that bad. Palm Bluffs, a team we don't really know how they're gonna affect how they're gonna be this year. You know, they they'll probably be a solid mid pack team, but we don't know if they're gonna be a division contender. Texas Southern's improving, but they're still not still not that good yet. So those are two pretty decent uh, West Division draws, and Valley's Valley right now. You know, until they do it, I can't I can't hype them too much. Even though I am Team Valley, I think they will win a game or two, but that's about it this year. Um, Coach Ely, I think, is on the hot seat. You know, they haven't made that big push like they thought they would um, after after the 2017 season, 2018, 2019. They haven't really. Did a lot the spring. They were, you know, back and up and down. But this is a make or break year. I don't know if six six or seven wins is enough to save the save a job. I know four or five most likely won't. But I do think they'll be a, a, a mid pack team. A six and five team in the East Division push you at fifth place. You know, that's that's tough. But you know, sometimes the record is, you know, they the the saying is you are what your record says you are, but Sometimes winning six games or five games doesn't necessarily mean you're a bad team. It means you may not have got the breaks because your schedule is not easy. And this is a challenging middle of the pack, middle of the season schedule. So hopefully uh, Alabama navigated and pick up some wins and start to improve themselves and put themselves in a better position in the division race. So um, that's pretty much going to do it. I think I I don't even remember if I did my intro, but um, you know, subscribe to the channel. We're at 192 subscribers, almost to 200. Man, you know I really appreciate the, these numbers jumping off like they're doing. Um, like the video, share them, hit that notification bell to be alerted to any content that I upload. Um, check out the podcast Swag Talk Anchor FM slash Swag Talk. Um, we have Alabama State preview dropping today on the podcast um we have a couple videos extra coming this week i uh, have a video coming on tuesday and one coming on thursday the thursday one is something new that i'm working on so it probably won't be on the swag talk channel but i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure how we're going to roll that out yet i do have a special video coming on tuesday on the on the channel and wednesday we cover all uh all corn um we preview that season and talk a little bit about media day and then sunday is bethune cookman on podcast and youtube so that's it man i appreciate y'all for listening and enjoy your week we'll see y'all on a busy week next week and we are out